Hey everyone, so I was looking over the videos that I've made so far and it looks like my get process to HTML report is really popular, but I'm disappointed because it's it's poor quality. I didn't really have the audio figured out or the screen capturing stuff. So I'm going to make a more advanced uh, HTML reporting example and I think it's pretty cool. So let's check out what we're going to make here. And as you'll see, unlike the other one, I have multiple uh, tables of information here. I have the services and I also have the processes. And you also notice that there's a bunch of extra formatting that I didn't have in the other one. I have a nice pretty light blue background and I even managed to figure out how to color these status messages for the services. So let's go and check out how we make all this happen. Now, in the other one, it was just one line of code because we were, we were dealing with one set of data. If we want to have multiple sets of data in there, uh, we need to do a little bit more logic. So what's happening is I have two variables with the sets of data that I want. I have a process variable and a services variable. And I'm doing the same thing in the first one. I'm, I'm getting the data. I'm refining it and I'm converting it to HTML but you'll notice that I have a parameter called fragment what fragment does is it strips away all of the extra HTML formatting and gives you basically uh, whatever would have been in the body of that HTML uh, after it gets converted so let me let me show you let's look inside of the services variable and you'll see that it's just a table it's a HTML table. So now we can inject this table into other properly formatted HTML pages and it'll be interpreted thusly. Uh, so we're doing that twice. We're getting a table of our services that we've refined and we're also getting a table of the processes that we refined. And by supplying fragment, we get just the table. Now, this next line of code is my code that creates the colored coordinated status messages because you can't you can't tell convert it to HTML to do that and PowerShell can't do that itself you have to actually go inside and look at the HTML code and um, put in the proper formatting so what's happening is I'm going line by line in that services variable and I'm piping those lines to four each and what's happening is it's looking for the line and then by using this replace operator it's searching for the tables uh, the table data that has the word running in it and if it has the word running I want you to replace that table with a styled table so what will happen is that by injecting this style code inside of that table data it will um, it will override the styling inside of our header and you'll also notice that I have these two back ticks in front of the double quotes that's because um, PowerShell interprets double quotes as part of its own code so if I remove that back tick you'll see that it breaks the code and now PowerShell thinks that I only want it to convert this string into this smaller string. I don't want that. I need to tell it to ignore that as its own code and just leave it as part of the string. So I'm saying make sh make this table data style uh, colored and make it green. And so by saying services equals to services with this logic it replaces my service variable with, uh, you can actually see it down here, with the style elements green and if it finds stopped it replaces it with red so that's that's how I'm doing those coloring there because you can't you can't do it with CSS or PowerShell um, uh, in of itself so now what I need to do is I need to generate my full HTML um, code because those are just two uh, tables and if you don't have all that extra formatting it's it's not going to do anything so I'm making a new variable called HTML and I'm using convert to HTML again except I'm using um, all of the other proper tags 
Uh, so in the body, I'm injecting my services table, which is now formatted with uh, a little bit of styling and also the process table. And um, so that, that injects the content into the HTML. Now here's where the real magic happens. It's the CSS styling that makes it look so cool. Uh, let's come back up here. So you'll see I have a uh, light blue background. Um, I have a little bit of a margin around my tables so that they're not cluttered together. I have a uh, zebra style um, table background color. And um, really that's it other than, than um, changing the way that it displays. Now let's go look at, at some of the important stuff. So here we have my body and I'm giving it the light blue uh, color. So that's all I'm doing with the body. Now we're coming down to the tables. And in the table, I'm specifying to change the background color to white because if I don't tell it to be white, then it will inherit the background color of the body. And then it'll just, it'll, um, it'll look not as good. Uh, so here's, here's my margin that I'm putting around my table so that they're not uh, spaced together. They have a little bit of space between them. And here's, here's an important one. I'm using this float property and I'm telling it that the top should have zero pixels. And if I don't do that, I'll show you what happens here if I can figure out how to use this mouse properly. Of course I can't. What is going on here? Stop! <laughs> All right, uh, so float. Let's just use the good old keyboard. I don't know why I'm messing with that stupid mouse. So if I run this now, and we come back up here, you'll notice that it lines it up to the bottom. That's, that's not really helpful. I don't wanna have to scroll down every single time. So by putting float and then telling that the top should have zero pixels between it and um, uh, the top of its parent object, it moves everything to the top. And then display inline block just uh, tells that to display it um, laterally. So, uh, and then we also have a padding and, and the padding is the space inside of the item. The margin is on the outside. So we have a five pixel margin on the outside and then the padding is what's on the inside. So that's why we have these uh, five pixels around it. Um, and then of course we have our border, one pixel solid black. Now here's how we generate the, uh, the um, zebra uh, style uh, table. And I know this is pretty difficult in previous iterations, but in CSS3 it's really simple. I'm saying if you find a table row I want you to do something with the odd rows and um, nth child is a way of identifying which number you want. So I, if I put three here, it should just color the third um, row gray. Yep, so see, here's my first row, here's my second, and the third one gets colored gray. So that's a way of identifying um, uh, which one of those table rows but you can use odd or even in this case I'm using odd and I'm saying I want you to ap apply a light gray background color to all the odd rows so if I run that again hit refresh you'll see that I get my odd row coloring and that's it um, I know it's a little bit more code but it's it's not too complicated and you get a nice neat little report. You could even add, you know, a, another table that's got your CPU information, your, um, uh, you know, hard drive space left. So really it's, it's limitless. Um, so I want to thank everyone for checking out the first video and I hope that this is better quality and shows um, that the sky's the limit with PowerShell. There's, there's a lot of stuff you can do here. So thanks for checking it out.